today's project is to repurpose this old laptop screen into an HDMI monitor using this little universal controller board. If you've happened across this video because your screen looks like this, then carry on watching. I have a fix for you. You could use this for many things. You can play files from the USB port, which is also used to update the firmware. We have audio in and out, composite video, HDMI of course. Additionally, you could use it as a second monitor for a PC. It's powered by a 12 volt jack, which means that it could be portable, which is a good thing because the purpose to which I wish to put it is with this Firefly action cam. Now I have a video where I modified this camera to accept a telephoto lens. I'll put the standard lens back on for the moment. I found that trying to check the focus on the little screen uh, didn't work very well. So I've purchased this HDMI cable. What I really need is a portable monitor for checking the focus on this. Let's now then strip the screen down and connect this up and see how it works. The screws that we need to remove that hold the thing together are usually hidden behind these little rubber plugs. So we can see the screw there. The next step is to split the surrounding bezel away. For that I use a very blunt old utility knife and we just click it into the joint there and move it along twisting as we go. Now we can remove the bezel. See that this particular screen happens to have little speakers at the bottom so we may be able to reuse those. There is a little amplifier on the control board. Clearly we need to lose these hinges and the looking me mechanism at the top can go. So let's get rid of all of that and then we can flip the screen over and check the model number to make sure that the board that we're going to purchase has the correct connector and supports the resolution. With all those parts now removed, we're almost in a position to remove the screen. Down here at the bottom is the inverter board that supplies the high voltage for the backlight. We can disconnect that. The control board comes with its own inverter. These guys are pretty universal, so we might keep that as a spare. Now with that removed, we can carefully flip the screen over. Clearly there's going to be another cable. What we're interested in is the type of connector here and the model number of the screen so that we can check its maximum resolution, which we will need to know to flash the appropriate firmware. This connector is held in by some Kapton tape it appears and some other sticky. Let's remove that and we can see this which is a 30 pin connector. The board that I've purchased has the correct connector so all is good. The number that we're interested in is this designation here LP156 which is 15.6 inch screen. We can look that up in a database which I'll show you on the PC. Aside from that, we'll leave the speakers in place. Clearly, we have Wi-Fi antenna, which we can remove, and also a webcam. I'm going to keep that webcam. I have another project in mind for that. This is the web page to look up the panel details, and there'll be a link down in the description. We can see that it's an LG display. As far as I'm concerned, LG is still Lucky Gold Star and uh, nothing to do with life's good. However, what we need to know is the resolution, so 1366 by 768. Down in the interface details, the supply should be set to 3.3 volts. The connector, as we saw, is an LVDS 30-pin single-channel 6-bit connector. Here on the listing that I ordered the part from, we can confirm it's a 6-bit 30-pin LVDS with its own inverter. And here we can see all the parts that we get, including a remote control. Brilliant. The next thing to do then is to flash the appropriate firmware to the board so that it knows which panel it's talking to. On the description page, there are links to two different firmwares. I'm not entirely sure why. This one here appears to agree with the board number more closely. Let's open that 
and we can see here all the different firmwares available. Some appear to be particular to certain screens, others are just marked general. Therefore, for us to start, let's try this file here, 1366 by 768 general. Extract that. It's given us another folder. Open that, and it's a archive within an archive, so we need to unpack this as well. And that gives us a file which is an MD5 hash, a checksum, and the binary file, both of which need to go into the root directory of a USB pen drive. Having selected the files, then right mouse click and send to, and this is the drive designation. Now we can plug that into the board and flash it. Connected all the cables, now we can attempt the flash procedure. Flashing is always fraught with danger. It does warn you that if there's any interruption to the power when it is flashing, then it could brick the board, which is comforting. Pay attention here as well. This is clearly a, a high voltage supply for the backlight. It is insulated, but make sure it's not touching anything. And indeed that you do not touch it. Preparing these types of projects, I like to use this little variable power supply. I find it very handy. I have the USB plugged in, so without further ado, let's see how we get on. Now the light is alternating. It's doing its flashing procedure, I believe. Now that it's changed to the rapid flashing, I believe that its flashing task is over. Let's hope so. Remove the power now. And the USB drive. Connect our power again and pray. Press the power button for the display. And yes, we... Uh, we have something. It appears to be in Chinese. Let's grab the remote control now. We now access the menu. And I believe we flip along to the end here. Enter. And this one is the language support. Select the input for media. Movie. Well, that doesn't look right, does it? When you see a display like this then, reminiscent of some bad acid trip, you may think, what have I done wrong? Have I flashed the wrong firmware? Is the connector on the back of the display not correct? Is there some problem with all the little wires? Well, no, it's much simpler than that. There is, in fact, a hidden factory menu. If you press the menu key and then 1147, you get a new menu here of all sorts of options. What we need to change is in the panel setting, which is option 7. With the remote control then we go down to the panel setting and enter. What we need to change is the preset panel ID, which by default is set to 1. If we press the right hand key, we get a blank screen, keep going. This is panel ID 3. You can see it 8-bit. Although the display looks okay here, let's keep going. 5 is 6-bit LVDS normal. If we then choose that, enter. Now if we go back and select our movie file once more, we can see that things are as they should be. I'm going to go ahead now and refit the panel into the frame, connect up the speakers, and then we will resume. With the screen placed back inside its casing, I've screwed the control board to the side here. This board, by the way, runs quite hot, to be honest, and if you're going to put that in an enclosure, make sure you have sufficient ventilation and you may even need a fan. Off this side when we have the high voltage for the backlight, HDMI cable there, my media player. I've tacked the speaker wires onto the connection here. 
I've put the buttons on the back because all you really need is the remote control. I guess if your batteries go flat then you can recourse to using the buttons. Time now then to test the HDMI input. See if my little camera will work. Switch the little camera on. And there we have it. There's nothing like a nice tidy desk, that's what I always say. So yes, that's going to work for me for focusing the little camera. And finally then going back to the media player. I'm sure you're probably fed up with this by now. You can see the complete video for that uh, link in the description. So there we have it, a very good use for an old monitor and an inexpensive controller board. Just what I needed. Look at that landing. Straight down the middle.